All right, hello everyone. I'm Rod Stolmuller, and this is another Tech Talk Tuesday. Today we've got a uh, great show for you for you with our partner PurePort. Uh, Johnson Kathan is going to join us. He's the VP of Solution Engineering at PurePort, and he'll be joining Nicholas De La Cruz for most of the presentation today. Um, what we're seeing a lot out there today as people go to multi-cloud networking is they want to maximize the inner cloud and site to cloud performance in that multi-cloud architecture. And I think what you'll find today is that there's some really exciting things that we've done together with PurePort to make, to simplify that, that capability and actually make it very easy for customers to do this. So with that, let's uh, get going. I wanna talk a little bit about the agenda that we're gonna have. We're gonna, we're gonna start with some fundamentals of PurePort. So if you're not familiar with PurePort and what PurePort does, we'll give you some background information on that. And then as always, we'll talk a little bit about the fundamentals of Aviatrix for any of you who are just joining a Tech Talk for the first time. And then we'll jump right into uh, how we're, what we're doing. So we'll start with a problem statement and, and kind of what we're doing together. And then we'll talk about the architectures and use cases, get all the way down in, into performance and automation. And that should cover it for the day. We, I wanna uh, make sure everybody knows to use the Q&A panel uh, at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions uh, during the presentation, we have some folks that are monitoring for uh, your questions and we'll answer those uh, as we go along, as well as bring those up at the end uh, if we have time for a little bit of a Q&A session. So with that, let's move on to uh, the fundamentals of PurePort and I'll turn it over to Johnson. Great. Thanks, I appreciate it. So, uh, so PurePort was founded on the principle that cloud networking should be just as fast and agile, agile as the cloud itself, particularly with respect to the CSP's uh, private network offerings. So we call our solution the PurePort multi-cloud fabric. And in a nutshell, we enable fast, easy access to the private connectivity options for each cloud provider. So specifically, I'm talking about AWS Direct Connect, Azure Express Route, Google Cloud Interconnect, and uh, Oracle Fast Connect. Uh, we enable our, our customers to easily and quickly combine these connection types into a full mesh multi-cloud network, and also to tie in customer prem locations via private line, uh, IPsec, and, and most recently, uh, SD-WAN connections. So I'll run through a quick series of slides in just a few moments to illustrate how the platform works. But before I do, it's important to, uh, to point out a, a few key elements of our offering. Uh, first, our, our physical hardware stack uh, is deployed at key cloud on-ramp locations. So this is our gear literally sitting right next door to the cloud uh, and, and literally right next door to the cloud regions themselves in many cases. So what we're talking about is super low latency between the cloud and, and our gear, depending on depending on which, uh, which region we're talking about. Uh, we also, obviously we maintain private connections uh, to each of those supported clouds via their on-ramps uh, at those same locations. So second, we operate at layer three. Um, all of our connections include dedicated containerized virtual routers. You'll see in the next few slides how this works, but the idea is that every time you add a new connection, the platform spins up virtual routers to horizontally scale the network and automatically pre-configures them for the BGP peering that's necessary to take advantage of those private connectivity options. Uh, and because we're building uh, a layer three full mesh, there's no trombone effect with inner cloud data running all the way back and forth to customer prem in, you know, injecting unnecessary latency. Next, we're on demand uh, and fully self-service with pricing that's prorated hourly based on the bandwidth of, of each connection, you know, versus kind of the old way of doing things where you're signing a long-term contract and waiting 90 days. Again, the idea here is to make the network more cloud-like. You set it up, you tear it down, you make changes at will, and only pay for the hours that you use. And last, we're API first, which means that in addition to our web console, customers can write directly to our API uh, or leverage our published Terraform and Ansible integrations. Not to beat a dead horse, but you guessed it, more cloud-like. So next I wanna run through uh, a quick bit of slideware to explain how the platform works. Nicholas, next slide, thank you. Um, so I'll start with an, an empty canvas. Uh, and the center of this diagram is, is the PurePort platform. This would represent one of our, 
one of our uh, one of our pops that are right next door to those cloud on ramps. Obviously, you know this is a grossly simplified visual of our hardware architecture with just two engines, which typically we're deploying more, way more than that. Um, and we're also not showing the switching and some of the other elements. But the the key here is that we're using general purpose compute, aka servers, to deploy our routing stack. Again, you'll note our cloud native approach to networking versus uh, you know a more traditional approach where maybe you know, folks are deploying kind of big iron routers and so forth. We've, we've chosen a much more cloud native approach. Uh, next slide. So each connection that we add uh, will include the network links, in this case, Direct Connect, uh, and the virtual routers needed to, uh, to peer with uh, the cloud or, or prem environment. Uh, again, we started with Direct Connect AWS here. Um, we're handling the BGP peering over that uh, Direct Connect circuit. Uh, and in this case, we've deployed HA connections across discrete network paths with two virtual routers deployed on redundant uh, physical engines. You know, customers can choose not to go HA if they've got a development workload, um, but if they need HA, they don't have to spend a ton of time architecting and configuring the network. They just select HA in the console or via the API, and we handle the rest. Next slide. Next, we'll tie in uh, an Azure environment. Now, we connect via Express Route, and again, establish a BGP peering. And now my Azure and AWS environments can talk directly to one another over that private connectivity. Again, super low latency, high performance. Um, and again, we've deployed a pair of virtual routers specific to this connection, scaling the network as we go. So in the case of an Aviatrix plus PurePort architecture, Basically, what we've built here is, is the private underlay that Aviatrix would use to connect those two clouds. And as I think Nicholas will probably point out during his section, uh, you could continue to use the internet as a backup, um, you know, as a secondary path. But, uh, you know, the, the primary would be that, uh, that private connectivity via the PurePort underlay. Next slide. So next, I can add additional clouds. In this case, Google could be Oracle. Uh, could be a connection to one of those, you know, one of the already existing clouds in a different one of our physical pops, uh, or next slide, a connection back to customer prem. In this example, I'm, I'm showing that the customer has run private line to us, but that could just as easily be an SD-WAN connection uh, or an IPsec connection over the internet. And to reiterate, a lot of our customers use many or all of the above in a, in a fully hybrid network, you know, combining the, the physical private line, IPsec connectivity for their, their smaller branch offices, um, and in a lot of cases, you know, two or three clouds in, in multiple regions. So I could dig in for another 30 minutes or so on, on some of the, you know, deeper features of the platform, but I think for, for our purposes today that, that covers the fundamentals. Um, Nicholas, anything you want to add or that I missed? Uh, no, I think it's very clear. Thank you, Johnson. And uh, now it's uh, time to hand it over back to Rod for Evitrix Fundamentals. Yeah, great. Thanks, Johnson. I mean, that it's really exciting to have that capability. And, and for any of you who haven't, you know, used PurePort, the ability to do that via software and be able to spin these up without going through a whole procurement process and so forth that you might have had to do in the past for other solutions that provide connectivity to clouds, this is really powerful capability. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about Aviatrix and how we can operate, as Johnson says, as an overlay on top of that powerful underlay that, uh, that, that PurePort builds between clouds and between data centers and, and the cloud. So let's talk a little bit about Aviatrix now, for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, everything that we do is really about uh, what we call a multi-cloud network architecture. So we're, we're a little different than what PurePort's doing. We're doing the networking in the cloud as opposed to the networking to the cloud. Um, and to do this, one of the things that's a real benefit for customers is that we're providing enterprise class visibility, full control of advanced network and security capabilities that maybe aren't found in the cloud. These are additions to what, what is uh, native in the cloud and then giving you multi-cloud optionality. So the ability to start in one cloud, but be, have the flexibility to extend the same architecture across multiple clouds. 
Go ahead, Nick. There you go. Um, the, uh, the, the key piece here is the multi-cloud transit network foundation. And this is the key because this is where the cloud access connects into. So as you'll see later in, this is where PurePort connects into uh, the Aviatrix uh, the transit. It's also where the application layer is connecting in. If those applications want to talk to other VPCs or VNets or be able to get uh, through the access layer, say, to on-prem services. Now, to do this, we provide the Aviatrix Cloud Network platform, and I won't go into all of these details, but this is the, the platform is how we deliver the advanced networking, advanced security, advanced operational services that we'll briefly talk about, and then the service insertion capability to bring things like next generation firewalls and then create uh, a, a secure connection and route traffic for inspection from this, this multi-cloud network through your uh, next generation firewalls. So let's talk a little bit about the platform and the key pieces there so you can understand a little bit about how we put all this together. So first of all, this is not a SaaS or a managed service. This is software that you license and put on your own cloud instances. So all of the data and all of the control is uh, is is available to you. So we're, you're we're, you're not relying on a service to do this. Sorry. Now the I first the first person. The first part, number one here, is the Aviatrix controller. And you can think of that as the brain of the operations. It's talking to the Aviatrix gateways, number two, which are providing the advanced network and security capabilities. But it's also talking via APIs to the native constructs where the basic cloud networking and security capabilities are being delivered by the cloud service providers. You can see also that we're talking API to our partners to be able to bring those next, next generation firewall capabilities and do service insertion and chaining there. Um, this, this ability to talk APIs to the native cloud constructs really creates a cloud abstraction layer, cloud network abstraction. Uh, abstraction layer. And this is how we leverage our single Terraform provider. So by creating one infrastructure uh, as, as code module, that's going to be able to work across multiple clouds because that module is actually going to leverage the fact that the controller has the ability to talk to multiple languages. Therefore, you can deploy the same repeatable type architecture and security policies across multiple clouds. And then finally, all of this data from the Aviatrix Transit Network, because we're actually, we are the data plane, we're in line there, gets fed into our visualization platform we call Aviatrix Copilot. And you can see on the right, a couple of screenshots where we can build dynamic topology maps and do flow IQ, uh, which is net flow kind of analytics to be able to see all the flows in the network and drill down to specific ports and protocols so that you can do enterprise class uh, troubleshooting and, and, and analysis of what's happening on your cloud network. So let's just walk through how all this comes together real quickly. And this will be sort of the end of my present part of the presentation, but most customers start in one cloud. And you can see here that it's a hub and spoke architecture. Now this looks pretty simple, but behind that is a full equal cost, multi-path, active, active, um, service capability where the controller is actually monitoring what's happening with each one of those controllers. And if anything starts going uh, wrong, it can actually take a controller down and bring it back up and, and do some self-healing there. But very easily, then you can extend that into a second region and you see that you have this repeatable hub and spoke architecture. And then after that, that extends into multiple clouds. So you see, even as we go to multiple clouds, we keep that same repeatable architecture. 
then we can start adding features. So for instance, we can add high performance encryption here where everything is by default end-to-end -end encrypted, but you're only getting 1.25 gigabit per second going across uh, those encrypted links. With our high performance encryption, we can get up to 90 gig of IPsec encryption inside the cloud. And for those connections coming from the data center to the cloud that PurePort was talking about and can deliver um, you know, instantly, we, you might get a 10 gig connection, but if you're gonna do encryption across that, you would only get 1.25 gig. So we can give you full wire speed encryption on that uh, link that's coming, for instance, from PurePort uh, into the cloud and from your data, all the way from your data center into the cloud. Then we can give uh, neat security capabilities. So you may be familiar with creating uh, security domains in a single cloud, because we have this backbone, this multi-cloud backbone that be, is able to connect the clouds together, we can actually create multi-cloud network segmentation. So you can see in this picture where I might have green VPCs talking to green VNets in the same network segmentation or blue talking to blue, or I might have a purple that is a uh, shared services that everything can talk to. Then we, I mentioned the service insertion, so bringing your next generation uh, firewalls and then routing traffic as needed for inspection through those, but connected directly to that uh, multi-cloud network infrastructure. Then all of that feeds into the co-pilot uh, enterprise operational visibility. And then once you have this backbone, many of our customers want to leverage some of the use cases that we can provide to connect uh, your, your remote offices or your remote users. And in this case, this is where you could leverage poor, pure port as well. If those remote offices were connecting via S, SD-WAN, they could connect into pure port, which would then connect into this multi-cloud backbone. And then of course we have use cases for doing secure ingress and egress to the internet to make sure that you're complying with all your regulatory and corporate compliance. And then finally, cloud native capabilities. So if you're using some of the cloud native services, for example, an AWS Transit Gateway, these can be easily connected into this environment as well. So you end up with this end-to-end uh, -end visibility across a multi-cloud transit network <laughs> that supports and interoperates with the existing native features. So in the end, what we're doing is we're bringing the the simplicity and automation that everybody expects from cloud, but also bringing the enterprise class visibility and control by having all of the visibility stuff that I talked about with, uh, with Copilot, as well as all the advanced networking security and automation features uh, of, the, of the Aviatrix platform on top of what the, the cloud providers deliver. So, Let's talk now, let's transition now to, to focusing on how these two things come together. So from a problem statement, it's really about being able to simplify and automate high performance private networking between data centers, branch offices and the cloud, right? While simplifying and automating the actual networking in the cloud. And this ends up being able to deliver end-to-end -end security control and operational visibility across all of them. So how do we actually meet those challenges? So as you saw a little bit about PurePort, uh, th this makes it very easy to use, extremely quick to deploy minutes instead of weeks in terms of getting all of these connections up. You can get high performance up to 10 gig encrypted when you're combining these two things. Uh, you can have a multi-cloud repeatable architecture. So being able to get the connection to the cloud and connecting that within the cloud, uh, giving you deep visibility. Uh, and this is all completely automated with both PurePort and Aviatrix supporting Terraform. You have the ability to make this part of an infrastructure as code um, uh, CI/CD pipeline, and then be able to pull all of this together. And as as 
Nicholas goes through this, you'll see that you have the ability to leverage this high speed uh, underlay, high speed backbone of how you're connecting your offices to, to, to the cloud, how you're connecting your data centers to the cloud, but also because we can leverage the internet and leveraging uh, Aviatrix traffic engineering, we can prioritize that high speed route. But if anything happens with the high speed route, you always have the internet to maintain connectivity to everything you're, you're connected across your multi-cloud network. All right, sounds great, thank you. Uh, yeah. Turn it over to you, take it away. Thank you, Ron, I appreciate it. So let's deep dive <clears throat> into more technical architecture and use cases now. Um, there's gonna be two of them. The first one is how do you get a dedicated high-speed, low-latency, single cloud connectivity to on-prem? And so to better understand how PurePort and Evitrix fit together, you can see they are extremely complementary. Um, Evitrix provides all the enterprise-grade networking in the cloud that Rob just talked about, and PurePort provides all the benefits reaching to the cloud that Johnson talked about. So this is how they are complementary. And um, over the next 20 minutes, I'll show you how we can use the PurePort underlay and all its benefits to um, carry an Evitrix overlay on top of it. So we'll start with an example of AWS. Um, what is happening here is we have an on-prem data center that you can see on the bottom right side. And we have a router and we have some workloads that need connectivity to the cloud. We don't want to go over the public internet. We want to leverage the direct connect connection we have purchased. OK, so um, the way this is going to work is that PurePort is providing us this on-prem to AWS connectivity via direct connect. You have your on-prem data center that connects to the PurePort uh, uh, solution in typically in a co-location, which could be over um, you know, the public internet, actually BGP over IP site VPN. Or um, if you need more capacity from on-prem to pure pod, it would be over a dedicated line. Um, at this point, um, using the direct connect native BGP capabilities, we are going to get the underlay routes propagated uh, between the cloud and on-prem, what it means is this is the transit VPC that is hosting the Evitrix transit gateways, right? Um, those transit gateways need reachability back to the on-prem router and vice versa, right? Because this is how we're gonna build our overlay network, okay? And once we have this, um, we will build the overlay on top of it, the overlay meaning the Evitrix overlay. What this means is we're gonna to start to advertise the subnets in which we have the cloud workloads um, and the subnets on which we have the on-prem workloads. And from this point on, we'll get end-to-end -end workload communication from the cloud to on-prem going over this um, um, direct connect and pure port underlay. So in other words, what we are building is this, those orange lines. It's, it's a Navitrix overlay using BGP as a control plane that is going over IPsec VPN on top of a direct connect line. And so you'll notice the underlay that we're going to build is all, on, uh, is, is all based on private IPs, right? Those are the private IPs of our transit gateways, and this is the private IP of our on-prem router. So let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how we, we would configure the underlay using PurePort. And again, our end goal is reachability between this transit VPC subnet and or the subnet of our on-prem router, or it could be whatever slash 30, um, you know, IP of, of the on-prem router over here. This is our goal. Okay, so all we need to do is first go to PurePod console. It's a web-based console. And um, all you need is basically to click and say, okay, I would like a direct connect. Um, my main location is in Seattle and I need to get to AWS uh, using a private type of peering. Okay, all the types are like, um, you know, transit V for those kind of solutions, which we're not using for, for this example. And then you select your speed. So 
at this point, um, PurePort is, is setting up their, their virtual routers. And at the same time, um, we have a Direct Connect connection that is being created for us automatically in AWS. And so we, we can we can start to see some of the of the parameters that are showing up, and after a few minutes, it becomes available. So again, I want everybody to realize just that is pretty huge, because for anybody who has done some direct connect, this typically does not happen in just a few minutes. It takes a long time to get to direct connect setup typically, because there are some actual um, you know people that need to go into data center and make physical connections. But, but PurePod is doing all the magic that enables us to get to Direct Connect literally in, in a few minutes. Second thing we need to do is a VIF, right? A virtual interface. That's the fundamental components that allows you to uh, uh, set up your BGP over a Direct Connect. And so what's great is PurePod actually helps you do that. OK, um, they have you know, prepared all the different parameters of your private VIF. And then you can click on create VIF that is bringing you to the AWS console and uh, helping you to set up the private VIF. Okay, so of course the connection is the one we just created. Now what we do is we select the VGW, right? That's the AWS virtual private gateway that we have previously attached to our Aviatrix Transit VPC. This virtual private gateway is essentially the router from AWS that will terminate the direct connect into our VPC and propagate uh, the underlay routes from PurePort to our VPC route table. OK, so this is the next step. Once we have configured our private VIF, we see that it's available. We see what's the AS number from Amazon, what is our location, and, and a few various parameters. So at this point, the underlay is actually ready. We can start to validate this underlay. So remember, we wanted to get this underlay connectivity between our transit VPC and our on-prem subnet over here. So now when we go to PurePort, first of all, we see that from the PurePort Seattle location, we have this connection to on-prem we have built before. And then we have this new connection to AWS that we have just built. And so what do we see is that the pure power router, of course, talks BGP, and it has two things. It knows the route to the Avitrix Transit VPC. This is our 10.20.0.0.16. And it has a route to the on-prem data center. That's our 192.168.28 over here. So at this point, it's, it's starting to look pretty good. Now, what we see is the on-prem subnet of the router has successfully been propagated to our VGW, right? From PurePort to the VGW over our BGP. Because we look now in our transit VPC route table and we see we, we have, it's, it's, not a, it's not a static route we have done. It's just a dynamic um, VGW propagated route. Okay, so it's good from the transit VPC, we know our transit gateways are gonna be able to reach back all the way back to the on-prem router and vice versa. On the on-prem router, typical type of Cisco, you know, edge router, we have a route to the Evitrix Transit VPC, 10.20.0.0.15, okay? So at this point, the underlay is ready and we can do a ping. We can ping the private IP of the Evitrix Transit Gateway from on-prem. And so how much time does it take? Uh, in my lab, it takes me 15 minutes. So it's an amazing achievement because again, back to what it would normally would take to set up a direct connect underlay uh, would literally be days or weeks. And so because we have a pure software driven technology, we were able to do it in just 15 minutes. Okay, so we have the underlay in place. Now we need to set up the overlay. Okay, so the overlay, is going to be going to the Evitrix controller. We assume before we have the Evitrix transit that is already in place. Okay, that's out of the scope of today. But this is what Rod explained, you know, hub and spoke architecture in the cloud. Now, what we'll do is from the Evitrix transit gateways, 
we'll create a BGP over IPsec overlay session back to the on-prem router to carry our overlay routes. And it's extremely simple. You go to Evitrix controller, multi-cloud transit. And from a transit gateway, from Evitrix, there is an option to connect to an external device via BGP. We select a few different parameters, like what's our AS number. And what's very important is you notice over here, we connect to the on-prem router private IP. OK, um, that, that's really all you need to do. It's literally just, that's why I only have one slide. It, then you go right away to your validation. I mean, of course, this is just assuming the on-prem router also needs to be configured. But if it give you the iOS or whatever Juniper config, and you just have to copy paste it on your on-prem router. So at this point, we have our overlay BGP sessions that are uh, up. Okay, so what, what does it mean? Right, you'll notice this is the difference. Earlier we had the underlay in place, okay? But we built a Navitrix overlay to, uh, to abstract everything, which means that now we have our spoke VPC ciders. This is where we host our workloads that are received all the way down to our on-prem router. So we have a 1021, a 1025, and a 1026 that is not shown in this diagram. But you see that now they are propagated using the BGP overlay on the on-prem router. And so that's why the ES number, there's only one, the 65002, 65002. This is the BGPS of our transit VPC. OK, so what's, what is happening now is Evitrix Transit Gateways are receiving also the on-prem routes. OK, this is, this is really the 40 to 16. This is our on-prem subnet that is hosting the on-prem workloads. And the Evitrix has an automated software-defined control plane that is learning the routes from BGP and then doing a software-defined propagation of the routes to the Evitrix spoke gateways. Because see, we have those Evitrix gateways in our prod VPC and in our, in our dev VPC hosting the workloads, which need to be aware. They need to know how to reach back to on-prem because those instances are going to be trying to talk to on-prem. So what happens is if I look at the raw table of my production gateway over here, I see that I have the 40 to 16 route back to on-prem going over my Evitrix overlay transit. So at this point, we can start to check that we have end-to-end -end workload connectivity over all the direct connects. And so uh, we log in into one of our cloud EC2 instances. We have this 1021-8031. We are on this instance right now. And we do a ping or, you know, back to on-prem. And you'll notice actually the latency is pretty low. That's, that's a pretty clear indication. This is not going over the public internet, but this is going to on-prem. This is going over. Um, you know, sorry, the direct connect, private connection. Now back to on-prem. Okay, this is, you know, logging in on, on a physical on-prem server or VM. We are able to also do a ping back to the cloud. And now what is very cool is if you do a trace route, that's when, that's when you see your trace route is purely over the private IPs of your direct connect. It's never going over the public internet. So, it's done, and again, it took just 15 minutes, maybe even, even less. Now, the whole beauty of it is, say, we started in AWS, but we expand to Azure, or maybe vice versa, we want to start in Azure. This is where this partnership is absolutely amazing, because we were explaining to you guys how both PurePort and Aviatrix are multi-cloud, what it means is everything I just explained is 100% repeatable to Azure. It's exactly the same architecture. It's exactly the same way that you operate the platforms. And it's exactly the same control plane. Without Purport and without Evitrix, first of all, it would take a lot of time, but you would have to relearn a bunch of different things because Azure is completely different from AWS, that they are competitors. Um, and, and also, even if you relearn the way the control plane works, um, the way the path selection is done is, is pretty different across the different type of cloud providers. So it is, I would say, 99% the same. What is the only difference? Is our data plane 
now is Azure Express Route. So what is really the main difference is as you configure your underlay in pure port, the type now is not AWS Direct Connect, it is Azure Express Route. It's literally the only change you need to make. This is the power of a multi-cloud platform. From the EVTrix perspective, there's actually no change. The only change is that we had this existing underlay we just built, you know, uh, over over the Azure Express Route. So this this is the underlay we choose to set up our overlay. But the rest there is absolutely no change. Even better, you get to GCP. Well, again, it's a completely repeatable multi-cloud architecture. Same in the cloud and same to get to the cloud and to on-prem. Exactly the same. Only difference this time is our data plane is GCP, Cloud Interconnect. OK, that's for the first use case. The second use case is, OK, we onboarded one cloud, we onboarded the second cloud. Most of customers we talk about want actually those two clouds to communicate. We can make them communicate over the public internet using Evitrix. That's very easy. But we have those private lines back to PurePort. We use them initially to get to on-prem. Why couldn't we use those private lines for the multi-cloud data plane? That's exactly what we're going to do, right? So there's not, there still could be on-prem communication, of course. But here, this is more about wanting to have two different clouds talk with a high performance and a low, low latency over the private connections. And so if you say it's Azure and AWS, you're going to have your AVTrix transit in both clouds. And we'll, we're going to build a transit peering between the AVTrix transit gateways over Express Route and Direct Connect. OK? Underneath the hood, the physical underlay, is going to be express routes going to pure port, which now is acting as this connection broker. That's that's a massive benefit of pure port is being multi-cloud, not just works in every cloud, but being able to bridge the clouds, have a smart control plane that is connecting the two clouds. So you have all the benefits that you got from before, plus the multi-cloud data plane, uh, the multi-cloud underlay from pure port, and the multi-cloud overlay from Evitrix. We can do the same with every possible combination of different clouds. Okay, um, it could be from a GCP cloud to an Oracle cloud or GCP to AWS. I mean, you understood the various combinations. Right? It, it works exactly the same way. Only difference is they have different type of private connectivities, and it's great because PurePort is just natively handling all those different connectivity types. So, if we get into a more uh, technical architecture. That's how it is. You see the same type of transit that we have built in AWS and in Azure, we keep the same. But what we do is we peer the Aviatrix transit gateways. And so like Rod mentioned uh, at the beginning, we'll actually do two peerings. We'll do a primary peering over the direct connect and express route underlay. And then we we'll do a second one over public IPs go over the public internet as a backup connection. OK, so how do we configure it? Well, it's the same. <laughs> There's actually no difference from before. And just because of the nature of PurePort, because we have um, attached our AWS Direct Connect to the same PurePort virtual routers than the Azure one, then PurePort is going to exchange the underlay routes automatically, bidirectionally. And therefore, your data planes are automatically connected. This is my actual lab, and I literally had nothing to do when I started to do multi-cloud because I had done AWS and I had done Azure. As, as long as you connect them to the same pure port element, you're, you're going to get the multi-cloud connectivity. And so what does it mean? We have our AWS Transit VPC 1020. We have our Azure Transit VNet 10100. What do we see from the pure port underlay perspective? is I'm on the AWS and I have a BGP route to Azure, and I'm on Azure and I have a BGP route to AWS. So at this point, it feels pretty good because I can go to AVTrix and this time build the multi-cloud transit peering 
and I'm going to check the checkbox peering over the private networks. Okay, what does it mean is that um, we use simply the private IPs of our AVTRIX transit gateways. We choose the first gateway in AWS and the second gateway in Azure. Now, like I said, we are going to build a second peering just for you know more, more, more availability. But this time we do not check this box, which means it's going to use public IPs going over the public internet. So now the question is going to be, hey, how do I make sure that assuming both connections are up, I don't really want the traffic to go over the public internet. I, I want to use my primary uh, um, direct connect and express routes connection. And for that, we use a very usual traffic engineering capability called BGP AS pass prepending. Okay, so what we do is um, over here, we go to our AWS AVTRIX transit gateway. And for the link, so you see it's part of the AS65002. So for the transit peering going, going over the public IP to Azure, we're going to do AS pass prepending. What it means is the Azure AVTRIX transit gateway is going to receive the routes. And because the routes arriving on this transit peering over the public internet, they will have a longer AS path, so they will not be preferred. The routes that will be preferred are going to be the ones arriving on the transit peering. And of course, we need to do the reverse just uh, from Azure to AWS. And uh, this way, um, it's all going to go over our private peering. But if it were to go down, then traffic would simply use the transit peering over the public internet. So we can do validation. This is an AWS instance, remember this 1021 subnet. And we have another instance that we ping. And again, you'll notice the latency is pretty low, right? I mean, there's, you don't typically get this type of latency when you write the public internet. And so um, it's, it's a really good indication this, this is actually working, but we can confirm because doing a trace route from AWS to Azure, we see that it's all going over the private IPs of the various Evitrix gateways. Okay, how long did it take? Literally two minutes, literally two minutes because we had the pure port already in place. All we had to do is, is do five clicks to build, uh, to build the two peerings and um, enter one extra AS to do an AS pass prepend. So an amazing velocity over here that we have. Okay, so what performance do we get? Because the whole goal was to get a high performance. So there's basically a few options. The first one is to just use BGP over IPsec. Right? That's what most people do today. Um, and we're talking overlay performance, right? Between the on-prem router and AVTRIX gateways into cloud. So if you do regular packet size, um, typically you would deploy two tunnels and two on-prem routers for HA, so that would get you to five gig. If you have jumbo frames, there's less processing to be done, so that's actually going to be 20 gig. Okay, and traffic is completely going to be encrypted end-to-end. -end. The second option is actually coming next month. Um, Evitrix is going to have the ability to build the overlay over simply GRE. Okay, and because it's GRE, there is no IPsec, and so there's less um, the less load uh, that is that is placed on both the on-prem router and the transit gateway. Um, and the, the measurements we have so far is for regular packages is 20 gig. So you see, we actually do times four compared to IPsec. Okay, we, 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 we release the measurement for the jumbo frames as we get closer to the release. But if encryption is not important for you, which could be because you know, you're on direct connect, then fine, you, know, you, you get a much higher performance. Now, the last option is called CloudN. It's an Evitrix physical device that you can deploy on-prem. It's a one RU appliance that is capable of very high performance encryption on-prem when talking to an Evitrix transit gateway in the cloud. Um, so you get the best of both worlds because you get a much higher performance than anything and you get encryption. And the performance you're going to get is with any packet size, 25 gig per cloud end, which basically means line rate. And you deploy two cloud ends, so you're going to get 50 gig fully encrypted with any packet size. Okay, the last few slides, we were both talking automation. This is just to emphasize the fact 
that uh, both PurePort and Evitrix are official Terraform providers, which means that it's extremely straightforward to automate the entire solution using a single set of Terraform scripts. All right, Rod, this is back to you. All right, thanks, Nicholas. That was very helpful. And we had actually a lot of questions that came across. Um, Johnson, maybe you wanna uh, bring up a few of the questions that came across and, and maybe go through a couple of the answers for everybody. And while we're doing that, uh, just notice that a quick poll has popped up. Please fill that out while we're going through the Q&A period and so that we can get some feedback from you. Yeah, thanks, Rod. So uh, I'll actually answer the, uh, the most recent question that just came in first, as I haven't typed an answer for that one yet. Um, and the question is, so the PurePort router is in the same meet me location as the AWS Direct Connect router and Azure, and who will be managing the PurePort router? So there's, there's two parts to that question. Um, the first, the answer to the first is the PurePort router is actually in a location where the on-ramp, um, the, the on-ramps exist. So each of the cloud providers, um, in addition to their cloud regions, they maintain uh, on ramps for their private connectivity options into those regions. So, as an example, with AWS US East One in Ashburn, uh, their on ramps are, are in Ashburn and in Reston and in a few other places uh, around that metro. They also have on ramps into AWS US East One uh, in Dallas. Um, and so, in the case of the, the Pureport Dallas location, um, our routers are actually in Dallas at that on-ramp. Um, so they're not in the same physical location with the, with the cloud providers. Uh, in the case of our Ashburn POP, uh, which we, we call Washington DC, but it's, it's in Ashburn. Um, that POP is, is literally, you know, right next door within, within a few miles of, of each of the cloud providers regions there, there in Ashburn. And so it's really going to vary uh, depending on which which you know which one of our pops you're talking about, uh, where the cloud providers are actually maintaining the data centers that are part of their region, and where they're maintaining um, where they're maintaining their on ramps. Uh, as a, as another example, um, you know, we've we've got a, a San Jose or Silicon Valley location, and depending on which cloud provider, you know their their physical data center might be you know a couple of miles. Um, or in the case of Google, you know, their, their West um, facility in, in California is actually down in Los Angeles. So it, it really depends. Um, and I, I hope that answers that question adequately. The, the second part of that question was, you know, who, uh, basically who manages the PurePort router. And at the end of the day, we are responsible for the infrastructure. Uh, we are responsible for making sure that those, those virtual routers are up and running. Uh, and our platform, not a person, but our platform is actually responsible for, you know, updating and maintaining the configuration of those routers. And basically the, the way that uh, the end user controls those routers is either via our self-service graphical console or via API. Um, and at the end of the day, when you deploy, as an example, a new Direct Connect circuit, uh, we're deploying one or, or in the case of HA, a pair of those routers. They're pre-configured with everything that they need to, to complete the peering uh, with AWS. They are also pre-configured to peer back to um, a pair of route reflectors. There's really not you know, a, a ton of like secret magic going on in the back end and the platform. Really, the, the secret sauce is, is the orchestration. But uh, via that mechanism, then as additional connections are added and those routers join that network, they're all, they're all basically deployed in a full mesh. Outside of that, there's really not a whole lot to do with those virtual routers. They, um, you know, they run and they, uh, you know, we, we monitor them. We monitor the hardware. If there's a failure, you know, get the hardware back up and, and then, you know, the router comes back up. If there's a maintenance window, um, they might get rebooted. Uh, if you want to, if we have a new release and you want to upgrade those routers, then you can you can respawn them um, to get the newest code. But at the end of the day, there's there's you know there's really no ability or, or reason to log into a command line and and fiddle around with those configurations. Okay. 
Was there uh, any, any others there, Johnson, that you wanted to share with everybody? Um, I guess, I, why don't you look through those and see if there's one in, uh, Nicholas, maybe you wanna uh, uh, talk about the one that you just answered regarding the difference you know, like TGW and VWAN in, in Azure. Yeah, yeah, there was a question about, okay, now AWS has, has the TGW and there's Azure V1 and they're providing the, the secure connection with some monitoring and HA. So how effective AV tricks can be compared to this? And so it's actually complementary in this architecture we were using a VGW to terminate the, the direct connects, but you could very well use a TGW and TG, TGW would remain your underlay and you, you would still build your AVTRIX overlay on top of it with all the benefits that Rod talked about at the beginning. Segmentation, firewall insertion, deep visibility. Remember that TGW or V1 native type of solutions, they are actually very limited. They are not enterprise grade. They have a very small scale and they have no visibility at all. They are a complete black box. And so there's a massive value in deploying an AVTRIX overlay on top of those. And of course, I didn't even mention they are they are not multi-cloud by definition. So anything you would build on top of a TGW, you would basically put it to the, to the trash as as you onboard a different cloud. And then the day N is going to be terrible because you're you're going to have two completely separate solutions to manage. So that's the benefit of using Purport and AVTRIX is is 100% multi-cloud. So back back to you, Johnson. Were there uh, others that you wanted to bring out, real? Uh, yeah, I think the, actually the answer to that question fielded uh, fielded most of <laughs> most of the other ones. Um, there was a question about uh, what speeds are available. Uh, we support for the cloud connections. We support what the cloud providers support. So for most of them, that's some you know anywhere from 50 megabits per second all the way up to 10 gigs on the connection. Uh, Oracle being the, the one that's a little bit different. They actually start at one gig um, for our VPN and SD-WAN products. We go from 50 megs to one gig currently. Uh, and for physical ports, we support one gig, 10 gig, and then a few locations, 40 gig. But the virtual connections that sit on top of those ports really match what we, uh, you know, what, what we do with the cloud providers, which is anywhere between 50 megs and, and 10 gigs. Uh, and I should also mention... Um, that when you spin up an HA connection, uh, we do support ECMP for load sharing across the, the two links. Um, and if you spin up multiple connections to the same cloud or to back to the same customer prem location, we will support ECMP across, um, I think up to up to eight, uh, up to eight links to uh, to give you load sharing to increase the throughput. Okay. Thank you. On, um, on the Q&A road, if you don't mind, I see quite a few questions on AVTRIX segmentation domains. It's yeah. super nice to see the interest. There's a question that is, okay, is the AVTRIX segmentation end-to-end -end all the way up to the VPC or does it stop at the TGW, right? And it's a great question. It's actually end-to-end, -end, right? It's end-to-end -to, -end to the spoke VPC. So keep in mind the AVTRIX overlay does not really even know that there's a TGW or a V1. Okay, this is what we do for the underlay, but Evitrix overlay, it, it just sees a connection between Evitrix transit gateways and on-prem. And, and of course, the whole purpose of the Evitrix network is go all the way up to your spokes. So answer is yes, the segmentation applies all the way up to your spoke VPCs where you host your workloads. Right, and just to add to that, that could be a spoke VPC or it could be a spoke VNet. So you could actually have that segmentation and the, the connection policy apply both in Azure and in AWS or in Google or in Oracle, right? So you, you have that flexibility across all of them. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I, I hope that most of your questions, looks like we had a bunch of questions that got answered. Uh, if you have other questions, because we've run out of time now, if you have other questions about Aviatrix, info at aviatrix.com is probably the best way. We'll make sure that a solution architect gets in touch with you to answer those questions. Or info at pureport.com will get you to the right people at Pureport. Also want to mention that we've got some upcoming tech talks on January uh, 12th. 
I'm uh, talking about enterprise software delivery. We have many, many customers that actually use the Aviatrix uh, infrastructure for their business to deliver enterprise software to their customers. And then we're gonna talk about high performance encryption uh, for direct connects using our cloud and appliances on January 19th. And then on January 21, uh, we're gonna have uh, the AWS reInvent unpacked, meaning that we're going to talk about what came out at reInvent that is interesting to uh, Aviatrix and Aviatrix customers, networking capabilities and so forth. We have some speakers from AWS that are going to be talking about Outpost and some of the things that we're doing with Outpost and a bunch of other things. So I welcome you to uh, join any of these upcoming talks and hopefully we'll be talking to all of you again in the on another Tech Talk Tuesday.